For everybody who doesn't know, Roddy Roddy Piper was a wrestler back in the day, all right, WWF, and he was in a movie about aliens. And the thing is, the aliens were walking amongst us, right? They look like human beings. And no one could see the aliens except Roddy Roddy Piper because he had a pair of, a pair of special sunglasses. <laughs> and Keith David, right? Keith David is in the movie and he's his friend and he's trying to tell him, yo, Keith, it's not the name of the movie. Keith, there's aliens, bro. Like they're out here. And he's like, yo, there's no aliens, man. They end up fighting, bro. There's a scene where they end up fighting. And Rod Roddy Piper finally, you know, like he, he gets on top of, um, you know, he beats up Keith David. He gets on top of him and paws and he puts the sunglasses on him. And then Keith David looks around and he's like, oh, there's aliens everywhere, bro. And the aliens are stopping to look like, <gasps> They can see us. <laughs> and it's like, sometimes in life, you're Rowdy Rowdy Piper, bro. <laughs> can't no, no one else can see it. You're the only one that can see it. All right. And we're recording again. What's up, man? Oh, what's up, brother? How you doing? I'm amazing. How is man. everything? Everything is... Pretty decent. <laughs> pretty decent. Pretty, pretty okay. All right. No, I'm, I'll, I'm I'll, amazing. I'll that you are. That you are, Fenton. I'm right. doing well, you know? I can't. <clears throat> um, I am excited that I woke up this morning. Excited. Every day is a blessing. Every day is a blessing. Yes. Not to not to start on a sour note, but I, my um, my wife was showing me this article yesterday, and I was telling her, um, you know, people want to. I was watching a, I was listening to a podcast, and the guy was talking about one blessing no one ever really counts on a daily basis is walking into your home after driving home or getting home. Like we don't really take. I guess we take it for granted that like I drive I drive an hour without traffic, an hour and a half with traffic to and from work. Yeah. And he was saying you should count your blessing every time you make it to your front door and you're able to open that door and walk into your home, wherever they may, wherever that may be. And there was an article yesterday. My wife was showing me like a father took his, I could have sworn it was either six people in the car or it was five children plus him. I mean, six children plus him or five children, whatever it means, six people, right? <clears throat> the mom stayed at home. She didn't want to go out. She's like, I'll stay at home when you guys come back. I'll see you. They went out for ice cream and they never made it home. Mm. They went out for ice cream. It's not, again, it's not to start off on a, on a sour note. It's a, it happened. Con, yeah. yo, you're, you're blessed. Like they say, you know, most accidents happen within 15 minutes of the home. Yeah. They went out for ice cream. Okay. My dude, ice cream, never made it home. So count your blessings. Even the small one of literally making it home from work, school, whatever it may be on that daily basis. And you're able to walk into your front door. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's just, that's rough, man. Like I think we, all right, so we talk about it a lot in our house. Um, you know, we, we, in the mornings we pray, uh, usually before we leave the house, we pray together and, you know, we just traveling mercies, you know, just to get back home safe. You know, my wife is going, you know, to work. The little one's going to school or camp. You know, I'm walking to the couch. I might <laughs> trip on a Lego, snap, snap my neck. You know, <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> Lego's danger. Lego's but we, we don't take it lightly that not everybody makes it back home. And I, I agree. I wish more people would take it seriously and just be grateful. You know, we talk about gratefulness a lot. Like, just be grateful that, like, you made it back home because... Everybody don't. When we see accidents on the road, you know, we pray for the people, you know, that was in an accident. Could have been you. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Is that the topic yeah. of the day? It's not the topic. I just I just had to share that, actually. Um, whether or not the audience knows, we do speak. We were speaking for about an hour before we even pressed record just now. <laughs> yeah. But we um, almost almost didn't do this. <laughs> it's like, well, we talked. So do we need yeah. to record it? We already, we already spoke. <laughs> but no, the topic of the day, which I really do want to talk about, is all right. So the most difficult thing that someone can ever do is believe they can do it. 
And I mean, anyone can relate to this right now. I know I, I'm going to share with, with Fenton. He's, you know, doing this amazing plan for his website company, Olive Branch Digital. And just believing that you can get all the steps done. I don't know how much you want me to say right now about what you're doing behind yeah, the scenes. Good. I'm not Dive sure what you share. All right. Yeah. So, you know, going from making these amazing sites for companies and organizations, um, that you know they they cost they cost money because they have to be functional the way it's presented the the schemes that are put together writing the code writing the copywriting all that may be but now Fenton is creating what it would be equivalent to let's say like a Squarespace or a GoDaddy where you can pick templates out and just believing because Fenton and I have these conversations of can. I'm at this process of it, you know, I've, I have this, 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 and this step left and I just want to get it done, but I don't know if I can get it done. And I hear the, the stress and the passion, you know, as you speak, Fenton, but about believing the hardest thing you can believe is that you can actually get it done. And people sometimes will get stuck on their path because whether or not they still believe that the finish line is right around the corner. Um, so, I mean, I understand it. Even with myself finishing a project, most of the time with when it comes to some of these reclaim wood projects that customers order with us, I'm like, all right, I never did this before. But I, yeah, I'll, I'll do it for you. I'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you, as you go, you're kind of just putting those those uh patio steps down or you know those those steps in front of you as you go they're just going down like all right let's take that step i'm gonna believe that staircase is gonna be built by the time i'm done i'm just gonna take one step up each time and my belief will bring me to the to the close but um yeah but it's it's it'll be tough some days some days it will we'll test you on whether or not you know how much you believe in yourself your skills mm. Or just your your drive, right? Sometimes you just need to have a drive, and you kind of figure it out as you go. That's good. I'm not. <laughs> That's good. If you don't believe it, there's no way it's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. And I, I think a lot of successful people have said like you have to be a little delusional, a little crazy. You have to see things that other people can't see. And then be like, yeah, I see ghosts. Don't you see them too? You know, it's like, I see something that no one else sees and I'm going to act like it too. What's that movie, man, with Rowdy Rowdy Piper? Um, <laughs> they, uh, it's Rowdy Rowdy Piper and Keith David. It's called They, Them, They Something, They they Come. Hold on a second. This is worth looking up because. When was uh, this made in the 80s? Oh yeah, definitely. Because <laughs> yeah. I do, I think I remember a movie with him in the '80s, but I don't remember the name or the plot. All right, Roddy Roddy Piper with aliens. Thank you, Google. They live. They live. It's called They Live. Don't even remember. It's that. I'm gonna flash this uh, uh, screenshot across the screen when I edit this. <laughs> 1988, and wow. there. Okay, for everybody who doesn't know, Roddy Roddy Piper was a wrestler back in the day. All right, WWF. And he was in a movie about aliens. And the thing is, the aliens were walking amongst us, right? They look like human beings. And no one could see the aliens except Roddy Roddy Piper because he had a pair of, a pair of special sunglasses. <laughs> and Keith David, right? Keith David is in the movie and he's his friend and he's trying to tell him, yo, Keith, it's not the name of the movie. Keith, there's aliens, bro. Like, they're out here. And he's like, yo, there's no aliens, man. They end up fighting, bro. There's a scene where they end up fighting. And Rod Roddy Piper finally, you know, like, he, he gets on top of, um, you know, he beats up Keith David. He gets on top of him and pause, and he puts the sunglasses on him. And then Keith David looks around, and he's like, oh, there's aliens everywhere, bro. And the aliens are stopping to look like... <gasps> They can see us. <laughs> and it's like, sometimes in life, you're Rowdy Rowdy Piper, bro. <laughs> can't no, no one else can see it. You're the only one that can see it. And sometimes you have people like you, right? You're Keith David, except I didn't have to, you know what I'm saying? Like try to beat you up to get you to see my vision and put the sunglasses on you. He was like, yo, I see it too. 
And those are the people that you want in your life, in your corner, right? Because they see it too. And they're like, yo, you, you know, we're, I'm going to help push you. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, the reason why I told you what I was doing is because I needed accountability because everything you're saying is so true. Sometimes you're like, for me, I wouldn't call it necessarily a struggle with belief as much as overwhelming. If, If you're trying to do something that hasn't been done, and if you're trying to do something that you haven't done, and that maybe you don't know that you even have the ability to do, and you also don't know for sure like, you know, in your heart that it'll be successful, but on paper, maybe it may not seem like it. Right. Yo, sometimes you get a little discouraged, bro. I Like for everybody who's listening, who's ever felt that way, you're not crazy. You're trying to do something monumental. It's okay if sometimes you get discouraged. Tell your friends about it. I hate those memes that say, yo, move in silence. Don't tell nobody what you're Don't doing. Tell nobody. You know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> Just shut show up. them what you got. <laughs> shut up. I understand the concept of put your head down, work hard, and the results speak for themselves. I get mm-hmm. that. But you absolutely need to tell people what you are doing. Yes. You need to tell trusted advisors, trusted partners, people with wisdom, people who have done what you are trying to do already who can help you to navigate. Sometimes your idea is dumb. Sometimes it's not worth trying to execute. It's like, you know what, Fenton? That's (laughs) that's a horrible idea. It's never going to work and you're probably going to waste your time. And I'll say this last thing. Even then, sometimes you should should still keep going, you Mm -hmm. know, because sometimes even the people that are like closest to you and, you know, wisdom and everything, like they might get it wrong. So you won't know unless you try, but you absolutely should have people around you who can, um, you know, help you on your journey. That was a lot. Sorry. You got to remember, man, someone made doggy goggles one day. All right. What? Exactly. There's a man out there that became rich selling a rock. All right. (laughs) A rock. Pet rocks. No one remembers that. Didn't they bring those back at some point? Pet rocks. Some dude made money with pet rocks. All right, put it in a remember it was like like a dog house or something, like a little dog house with some hay. Man, <laughs> I always wanted one of those things too. My parents were like, I'm not buying you a rock, get a rock at the beach. <laughs> so it was it was hay, and it was a rock with googly eyes on it, and it was a pet rock. People ate that up. I'm sure his friends and family were like, "That's the dumbest idea I've ever heard." All right. He was like Usher. He was like, watch this. Watch this. Oh, all the way to the bank. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> just, just just go with it. Just figure it out. And you know what? Along the way, let's say it doesn't, because not everything will work out. Some things will fail. I know Fenton doesn't like that word fail, but I will use it repeatedly. Okay. You can still learn from it. It's still the process, right? It's not the it's not the destination. It's the journey. All right, enjoy the journey. Grow with it, you know. And like like uh, you were just saying, the people that you consider in your corner, share, share with them, share with those advisors that you trust and believe in that will hold you accountable to what you've just said. You know, it's it's okay. Mm-hmm. And I agree. I see those memes. Put your head down. Don't say anything. Forget this. Don't tell anyone. And when you're done, you they'll see what you create. Shut up. Everyone needs support. Yeah. All right. And you don't have to be, oh, I could do it on my own. Yeah. But you go further with help. No one's doing it on. And no one's. That's a lie. That is such a lie. It's such a social media lie. No one's doing anything on their own, bro. Everybody has at least one person working with them. And if at not, least. it's a team. I'm te- I'm looking, look at me, look me in the, in the eyes, people. Okay. They're lying to you. All right. No one accomplishes anything on their own. Um, I need to pause because I think my child's camp is calling me. Hold on. <laughs> All right. So what I, th- what I think, of, when I think about people who believe that you have to keep everything to yourself, I think trauma. I know it's like a buzzword and everything, but I think that people may be coming from an environment where there's been mistrust or an abuse of trust. And perhaps they don't feel comfortable confiding in people because 
their experiences show them don't confide in people. Things will not turn out well. And I think that's fair. Mm -hmm. So I would say that the other memes uh, uh, that they need to be looking at are the ones about kicking out certain people out of your circle. You know, um, identifying traits in people, you know, becoming a better judge of character. You know, sometimes you learn how to be a judge of character by getting burned. Right. But you don't stay in that place because that's not good for you internally. You know, that's not good for you emotionally to be in that hardened and protective state all the time. You know, like I have my guard up for stuff. Sure. But it's more like it's more like. I carry a big stick and I, I'm not concerned about people getting close to me because if you do, I got this big stick. <laughs> if that makes sense. It, I'm not concerned. Okay. Forget the stick analogy. Let's say I'm a, a trained martial artist, right? <laughs> I don't know why the stick thing, it didn't, it didn't right. stick, but let's say I'm a trained martial artist and I can handle myself. You have a different kind of confidence when you walk into a situation. You're not, you're not dumb. You don't walk into situations and be reckless and say, well, I can handle myself. But every little thing doesn't bother you and you say, oh, like I need to be nervous. When you can handle yourself, you say, all right, no, I see that. That's a potential threat. So, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna you know, see how, how things go because I can handle myself. Mm -hmm. When you've been in situations where people have abused your trust, you should hopefully be able to identify, you know, those markers, those signals. You get better at it over time. And then you say, all right, I see this is a person I should maybe stay away from. I see this is a situation that maybe I don't want to get into. Maybe I don't want to sign that paperwork. Maybe I don't want to join this team. Maybe I don't want, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But you can't live your whole life just being guarded and to say, well, I'm not going to do anything with anybody because, you know, I might get hurt. Like, that's an emotional thing. That's not, that's not strategy. That's not being practical. You may miss out on opportunities as well. Yes, it's a losing strategy. You're just always guarded all the time. It's like the whole, like, you know, if your hand is always, you know, fist is always closed, like you can't receive anything. You know what I'm saying? And you're like, oh, well, I don't want to keep my hand open because somebody might take what I have. Like, okay. all right, but you know what? What you give, you keep. And what you keep, you lose. So you have to make yourself open, you know, to be able to receive. And, uh, you know, as I saw it on, on Instagram the other day, or Earner Leisure said it, you reach a certain level in business where the only way to scale is to collaborate. Right. There is no, I'm, I've, I've taken it as far as I can take this on my own. Now I need to bring other people in in order for me to scale. And to your point about what I'm doing with my business, like I need other people. I can't do it by myself. I have to have other people. So what's crazy is that the more I collaborate, the more time I get back in my life because I'm not doing the things, uh, you know, certain things anymore, taking up my time. I make more money because scale. Mm -hmm. I have less stress because I'm not worried about every single little thing. There's other right. people to worry about. So like, this is how you, how you grow. So yeah, man, you, but you, you have to believe, you have to believe that you can work with other people. It's another belief thing. You have to believe that you can work with other people and that it's going to work out for the best. If your belief is that other people are going to always hurt you and things are going to crash and burn, well, what do you think is going to happen? You're going to unconsciously make that happen. Right. Subconsciously. You're going to make that happen. Everything is, is going to crash and burn all the time because you keep saying that that's what's going to happen. So your, 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 your brain's going to, it's going to make it happen. So look for the avenues to make you fail or crash and burn. That's the, <laughs> that's that's it. It. But it's, it's like, it's like, it's like those movies where, um, it was like, there was like a car commercial. I think it was a Geico commercial where they had, um, I'm sorry, I'm trying to think of, it's like a horror movie parody. And mm -hmm. they go running away from the guy who's trying to kill them. 
Oh, when they run into the shed with all the knives. Yeah, and like there's a running car there. And somebody's like, shouldn't we just like get into the car? <laughs> and they're like, no, let's go into the shed. <laughs> it's like when it's time for you to make decisions about what's the best thing to do. If you keep telling yourself that things are going to go left, like your brain is going to tell you go left. Even right. though there's a running car right there and you can make your getaway, you're going to run into the, the shed where you can get murdered. You're, you're, you're telling your brain to sabotage you. Yes, which, believe it or not, your brain does that a lot to you. And it's, it's, uh, it's supposed to be like a protection thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Go, uh, go, the, go the easy route, but it can actually sabotage what you're trying to accomplish. Makes no sense. Because you have to teach your brain that you can do difficult things. So, like, it makes sense. It's like, all right, well, I could continue doing, I could continue running my business the way that I'm running my business, or I can pivot into something unknown. Which one do you think my brain, my lizard brain, my amygdala is going to tell me to do? It's going to tell me to stay with the, the thing that's safe, right? right. Because it's embedded in us as human beings, like from so long ago, protect yourself, survival mode. Don't do things that are dangerous. Don't do things that are risky. You know, risk averse, being risk averse is a muscle. You have to, you know, like you have to grow that muscle, develop that muscle until you get to a place where it's like, all right, cool. I'm okay with risk. So you start out small with a, a little bit of risk. You know, mm -hmm. what if I do this differently today? What if I change my routine a bit? And you say, okay, well, that worked out. And you say, all right, well, I'm going to, I'm going to do some things even, even more differently now. I'm going to do, add a little bit more risk into this. And you could apply this to anything. It could be investing, your investment portfolio. It could be, um, it could be meeting people. You know what? Yeah. Some people never like to be the one to say hello. What if you said hello today? What if you said hello? What if you just, the first person that you see when you walk outside your home, <laughs> you say hello <laughs> and strike up a conversation? What if that's the catalyst to you becoming a better networker? Right. And that opens up opportunities and relationships in life that you never would have had because you're so risk averse. Well, the last time I tried to talk to somebody, you know. <laughs> no, what happened? <laughs> they, they, I'm not gonna, <laughs> every, everything I don't want to say, I was going to say. So I'm going to leave it alone. No. Uh, yeah. You, people really need to learn how to broaden their comfort zone, right? We, we've talked about comfort zones, right? And all it does is keep you comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> it keeps you from expanding anything. It keeps you from expanding your mind, expanding your, your network, expanding your resources. All you're doing is holding yourself back by not taking a little bit of risk and not accepting that your your brain is telling you stay safe right here right here safe but safe is not gonna safe is not gonna um reward you the mm. same as a risk right mm -hmm. isn't that what we all want we want the big reward where you got to take the big risk once in a while and the big risk means getting out of comfort zones and again i know we've talked about this and stepping away from what you know as what you know to be true because what you know to be true is what you tell yourself mm. so if you tell yourself i'm not good with talking with people if you tell yourself i know i can't accomplish tasks because i fail halfway through if you tell yourself that you know um i'm not smart enough or i can't pick up a book and read and learn something new whatever it may be if you keep telling yourself that you're not going to get the reward because you're not you're not allowing yourself you're not opening your brain to say let me take a risk that i'm not used to taking in order to get a new outcome, mm -hmm. right? What is it? If you do the same thing over and over, expecting a different result, it's insanity. All right. Well, if you want a new outcome, you're going to have to take a new risk. Yes, good. It, 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 it's the building <laughs> blocks. This is totally full circle because, you know, we're talking about people who maybe, you know, you don't want to do something because you've had a bad experience or because it's unknown. It could be either mm -hmm. one. And you don't believe that something is possible or you believe that something negative is going to happen. It's all about your belief system. When I think about my kid, I see her literally say 
daddy, I need help with this. And depending on what it is, I'll help her. But most times I'm like, no, you could do it. And she'll say, I can't do it. And I say, yeah, you can keep trying. And she'll keep trying. And then she'll say, I did it. And I'm like, of course you did. And now that you did it, you don't get to tell me that you can't do it anymore. <laughs> that privilege has been revoked. You no longer get to believe that. That belief has now been replaced with a new belief, which is that I can do it. Right. And now we'll move on to something else. So the next time she says, because this stuff aggregates, the next time she says, I can't do it. I'm like, what is that thing that you did the other day that you said you couldn't do? Da, 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 da. All right. You, did you do it? Yes, daddy, I did. All right, cool. You're going to do this too. And the belief system starts to become stronger and stronger and stronger. The beliefs become bigger and bigger and greater and greater. And now she starts to see the world through a different lens where, in a, where finally a confidence manifests itself in the physical world for all of us to see. She's, she's charged with doing something new. And instead of saying, I can't do it, I need help. She says, I can do it. I can do it. Let me do it. Her belief system has shifted. It's changed mm -hmm. over time. And like, if people would only learn to be like children yes. and be malleable in that way, but we're, we're hardened, we're protected, you know, we're calloused. We, our hearts are calloused. We don't want them to be hurt. Kids aren't like that. Kids are like, yo, I, I do. I figure it out, you know? Yeah. Otherwise, none of us will be walking. <laughs> All right. I feel that that a couple of times. I'm just going to sit down on this floor, <laughs> crawl around the rest of my life. <laughs> oh, my goodness. They believe. Kids believe. You have to have the belief of, a, of like a child, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Got to believe it. That's a good wrap up. I like that. <laughs> 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 it never gets old. All right. Well, I believe that more people should be subscribed to Products of Circumstance podcast. And um, if you enjoy the episode today, please share it with somebody who's on their personal development journey and um, hit like and subscribe and the notification bell. Yes. Enjoy your day, sir. I believe I will. Okay. All right. <laughs> Peace.